Hello and welcome back. I hope this will be a quick one. I want to talk about a tool which, well, didn't save my life, but it definitely definitely saved me a lot of time in the past. I'm talking about Python. For the people who don't know Python, Python is a scripting slash programming language, which also exists or which also has an interface within Rhino. And there is a scripting node within Grasshopper. And that's what I want to talk about. What I like with Python is that it's very easy to learn uh, and to understand. And I will show you very simple examples, which you can do with uh, the normal Grasshopper scripting, um, but sometimes it just saves time. And uh, when you cannot find the component or you would need to install a new Grasshopper component, then sometimes this this tool could save you could save you that time. In this tutorial, you will not learn how to script everything in Python. Python is a huge universe. We will just I will just go go through very simple basics, which can be very powerful still. So I want to cover three things, four things. Finding the maximum of a list, which is actually not that simple in Grasshopper. The maximum and the minimum. And, and then I will show you how a while loop works and a for loop. So these are the four things that we're going to look at very quickly. And we will make some a very simple uh, script which does something. That's what I also like with Python, with learning. So my problem in the past was that I learned, I tried to learn Python, but then it didn't do much. It, 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 it just shows you numbers and you calculate some numbers. And But then, so I was always thinking, how can I make an application with it? And that's very hard at the beginning. So what I like that it, that you can access it with through Grasshopper is that you can see a result right away because that makes you want to learn more. So this is the thing. This is the thing we're going to build. We built a, a tool which can offset, but it can just, it can offset like a more in a way that you can control a bit more. So in that, in that case, I offset like in pairs or always like two, Two numbers to get these like paired circles. You can do that, of course, in in Grasshopper, and it's more about to show how how powerful the scripting could be in Python. There are other scripting tools here, as you can see. There is uh, C Sharp. There's a Visual Basic script. The difference it's it's a bit different to learn. Um, you have much more stuff at the beginning, which is very confusing, but it's faster when you have uh, bigger stuff to calculate. You can start with any to learn any la scripting language. I think they all have things in common. What I like with Python. So if I choose this here, Grasshopper Python script, it's kind of much more simpler here. Um, everything here in green is just a comment, basically. It just tells you what kind of inputs you have and outputs, which are here. You, you actually don't need this. That's that's not necessary. And these are variables. They are also not necessary. So in theory, you could start like this and it still works fine. So you don't need the rest. So that that's already makes it much more simpler. And it already gives you it already gives you uh, the first line import Rhino script syntax as RS, which we will actually not use for this um, script, but we keep it in here and I can test here and there's and, and then you have an output uh, output window and that will um, show you the results. Um, so in that script, I, in that script, I created a loop, two loops actually. I created my own inputs, my own outputs. And the first loop is a while loop, which goes through um, goes through a function and, and generates these numbers, which I then use as an offset. And then I have another 
loop, a for loop, which goes through that list and adds a number to this. So, so that creates me the second ring here, and then I just combine it. And then there's there's another th there's another uh, thing I want to show you is the maximum and minimum. That could be sometimes very very useful. Okay, so let's let's try to uh, recreate this here. Um, I will just I will disable this function here, and we'll just rebuild the script. So, yes, so let's start with the component here. We open it up and we can create a while loop. A while loop for, works this way. So I'm gonna write here while. First, I, sorry, uh, first I need to actually uh, define a variable. A variable you can define with, for example, i as item. Let's call it item or let's call it number. It doesn't really matter. You can choose whatever you want. And I say n is one or n is zero. And the while loop works in a way that, for example, I can, I can define a condition. So I can say, as long as n is smaller, uh, sorry, smaller than a certain number, for example, a hundred, Then the number is the number plus and the num oh, sorry the is the number plus one. So it means at the moment at the beginning the, the number n is zero. And as long as the number n is below 100, we're adding always one. And this is basically a loop. So it, it, it goes through that loop until n is, is 100. It can't, go, it can't gr grow bigger than that. And we can... So this is this very simple kind of uh, way to work with it and I can test this and forgot something of course and now I could say print and print the number and now it printed all the numbers until 100 and, and but I want to actually see a zero also here in this list so let's start with zero that means I take this, I'm gonna cut it out and I put it before here. So it prints first my number, the number n, and then it adds one. And then it it prints it out and it adds one and it prints it out, adds one and so on. And that creates me this list from, from zero to a hundred. Okay, and, and uh, when I look here in the output, I can also add here the output and it will show me this list. And then A is nothing because I didn't uh, define anything for A. So and at the moment it's all output, the output. And um, by the way, it's going from, it goes from zero to 99 because uh, the, the definition says it shouldn't be larger than 100 or it shouldn't be it, as long as it's smaller than 100 so what if I want to and by the way so this works very similar to uh, creating a, seri a series here so the, the math set and uh, no, sets here series works very similar so what if I don't what if I want to change that number here the starting point on the fly I, I don't want to always have zero at the beginning and I don't want to always go into the script what I can do is I can actually add a slider and I could call this um, start value could have mini minus 
100 and 100 it's you can choose anything you want so now i have a slider from minus 100 to 100 and i can add this here on x and then instead of me saying n is zero i could say n is x okay now because it's 100 it already it doesn't work because then n would be already bigger but if i go now down here then you can see that um, it creates my list depending on my input and it is already updating it perfectly so <clears throat> so my while loop works quite nice and it starts where i want it to start you can also change this here you don't have to call this x but keep in mind if you change that here you also need to change then your variable so if i call this start value then the n is then n is start value now if i want to also change um, my final my goal number then i can do the same i could for example say here n, as long n is not is smaller than y that also works so i could add a number here let's do this first i could say here and value is in here and then I can um, change this to Y and now you can see that my my list only goes to 77 let's make it a more a smaller list so it's easier to see so now my list goes from minus 3 to 8 to 17 and I could I could use that already and create um let's create a circle i mean in theory you could do this we don't need an offset really you can also play with an offset of course you can use this number as offset but you could also feed it in and it creates your circles so that's that that's a possibility and then if you so you could play with this like like this now let's say i want to not just um, control the step size so at the moment we just always add one what if we want to change the step size to a number and we want to have a slider then it works exactly the same however we need to add something first so we need to add here we need to add a new number and we can copy this value here and then we call this um, step size and add this here and maybe this is better it's not a minus minimum maybe one so we can add this here and now we can change this one to set and now you can see that it basically can change the distance between the circles but it doesn't go further than 23 at the moment so we can go back to something here here the minus doesn't really make any sense in that in that case but it could be of course uh, if, if it's a more linear kind of object if it's like lines parallel to each other so we have with a very simple uh, scripting with very simple scripting we basically recreated this one so here the first number is, is zero so we could do the same here here's the step size and here is it's a bit different it's actually counting the how many you how many circles you want and here it's a, it's actually slightly different it goes as f as long as you reach a certain distance which can be an advantage sometimes so if you want to fit something within a certain area then this makes more sense okay now if we want to add more functionality to this then we can first of all what we can we can get a specific output 
you can create a specific output for 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 this for these numbers yes we have an output that takes basically what's ever, whatever is in in here and and adds it here but if you want to be more specific then there's another way to do that so first what we need to create is like a variable again and in this case we create a because we have the output a but we could of course create a different name let's do that maybe so instead of a we call that um, offset and offset is a list and the list is empty actually it's uh sorry it's not empty because uh i will show you how that works so at the moment this list has nothing in there and i want to add things and i want, want to add what's instead of like printing it and having a list in here or in the output i want to collect it into a list and to collect it, there's a simple function. It's called append. It's called, sorry, offset dot append and then n, n. And that means every time when it goes through a loop, it takes the result and adds it to the offset. And if we then we could then write here print offset then it creates this list at the end. The problem is that it always takes because it's a loop, it takes already the um, the result from the first function so it doesn't it doesn't include the first number and that's why instead of like putting here nothing I put in here n so it means the offset already has a first the first number in so if I run it again you can see it starts now from 1 now of course this now has a problem because it's it it doesn't understand what, what what's going on if i do this then it works so then there's no problem now in the offset is my offset list i will uh i need to, sorry i changed that again forget it forget that it's a uh, wrong thinking of mine so don't do that it's actually good that this happened because yes no so that's we don't want that because we want this to be here so first of all let's get rid of the print we don't need to print just take this offset append n that's good and then because we don't want anything which is larger than y in the list because that's what it did, no? It's, it was adding the last number, which was already bigger than 100. So forget what I said before, or keep it in mind. That's It's actually good that this happened, the mistake. So that means while the number is smaller than y, which is in that case 100, or smaller, of course, um, or any value you want, depending on your slider, Please add the number n to the list offset, which is defined here, and then add a value which I defined with set here with 16, or again the number you can then choose, and then add it to and then continue with your with your loop until until this is reached here. I hope it's clear I think I think and then uh, at the end we have print offset now it's you, now you can see that it's uh, combined here so the numbers are combined as one list and not each value in one big sausage so basic it's 
already creates more clarity also. We don't need this anymore. We don't need to print it anymore, really. Now, if I want to then... So if I want to finish this loop and then start another loop and go through that list, which I just created, and add a number, as I said before, so then I could use a different loop. For that, we could use the for loop. The for loop works like this. For a number, which then we call, let's call it number. <laughs> let's call it uh, M. For M in offset, what it means is go through each value in the list offset, go for each item in the list offset and do something with it. For M in offset is M plus, ah, sorry, is M is M plus, and now we could add a number or another variable. So we could add now, um, okay, now it, of course it creates this um, arrow. Uh, we could add another one here. Let's add another one here. And we, this is U, let's just keep, let's just use that. And U, let's add this U here. Now if I test this, um, it doesn't work. It creates me a runtime error. And this is because this while function isn't, hasn't stopped really. So we can add another condition here and say, if n is larger than y, break. If n is larger, sorry, is larger or same as, as y, that's what you need to write. If n is larger, then it should work now. Yeah, I'm okay, oh, sorry. Yeah, there was something wrong with the for loop. The for loop is not finished yet. So first of all, we need a value here. We don't have a value n. And we need we need to define m first. So uh, you can see here, um, first of all, we want to have m needs to have a value, need to be defined. You can say m is zero. So that need to be done first. now m is defined and uh, we also need to provide something for u so let's take this i don't know what i call it what to call it let's put this in four now now it worked so in order to see what's in here, what, what's in this for loop, we could uh, say print, print M. Okay. So now you can see that it was creating, so this is my output from the while loop. So I have a while loop here that creates me this list, the offset list and and then now you can see the values coming out of the for loop the for loop goes through that list and adds the variable u to that value which is in that case it's four so it's it's one plus four is five 31 plus five is a four is uh, 35 and so on 61 plus 5 is, uh, plus 4 is 65, and 91 plus 4 is 95. That's what it does. So in order to get that also out here, we create another list. Pair is an empty list. And we adding we do the same here, you know, we add um, the offset. In that case, we add the offset afterwards. I need to be careful what I'm saying here. But basically, with, in the for loop, we, we do the same as we did, did here. 
we have this pair as a list as an empty list and then it the for loop goes through the offset list and for each value in the offset list it adds the variable u which we this we call the pair value okay so we call it pair and then append m and we we get rid of this here and we can we can say print maybe it's easier uh, offset and print the pair okay now it should work yeah oh one of my lights got bust that means soon we'll be in the dark here okay let's see if i still have a battery on the camera yeah still have okay so that's done and now and now i will add an offset here uh another output here which i call pair which is um, the same as here of course it doesn't work now it works now if i combine this let's let's get rid of this one here let's move it somewhere now let could, could combine these values uh, with merge is it merge uh, merge By the way, merge also works like this. You can add stuff here if you want. Now we have all the values in one list and we could add this to the radius and it creates me this one. And then of course I can still play with my values here. And the step size. The power of Python. So now I show you something very simple, uh, but I used it a lot already in the past. So I copy this. No, no, I, I just create a new one. Anyway, I have my list here, my new list. I mean, I can see, yeah, I have the, the biggest value here, 92. But for example, for a list which is random and it's not sorted, then and you want to get the maximum or the minimum then you could use python because if for example if i would use the maximum the maximum component provided by a grasshopper then i would go in here and i would need to provide another number which I never really got. I, I didn't understand it. It's like comparing one number. So this is something I don't understand. I don't really completely understand this component. Anyway, um, maybe somebody explain me that. If I want to get the, maxi the maximum number out of this list, I can actually create a very simple Python script. I go in here and now we learn something one more thing very uh, important in python and how to use this i could go in here again i can kick all this stuff here out i don't need that it was simple here here was easy because these are uh, only one uh, a value it's only one value it's not a list so that's something important to keep in mind because at the moment uh, python doesn't understand that this that this uh, incoming stuff is a list. So what we need to do is we need to give them the understanding that this is a list and you can do this here. It's either an item access or it's a list access or a tree, or you give them a hint what it could be. 
that's also possible. So I will say list. Now Python knows whatever is in X is a list of numbers. Yeah, it's this list here. And I can say max of X. Sorry, it's not that easy. <laughs> well, it is very easy, but I'm um, of course made a mistake. Maximum is Yeah, then print maximum. And it can also be minimum. You can also write here minimum. Minimum is minimum is oh yeah, because I need to sorry. Minimum. I can have both also. Um I can also remove this and call it call this here minimum and it should give me the number 10 or whatever is here the smallest that doesn't work why minimum is the minimum of x okay oh yeah that it worked you just need to update this sometimes so it, it runs properly i mean it doesn't get simpler really it really doesn't get simpler what it means is i define a name and it can be anything i just write a name what i want this to be what I, what is the result on how I want to call the result and I call it minimum because I want to get the minimum out of the list X so minimum the mi minimum of X I haven't really got this minimum I'd... first item for comparison second item for comparison i don't understand this tool maybe i haven't because i have never used it really but you can see how simple is how simple that could be and it, but at the same time very powerful i hope you like this episode like and subscribe and if you have any questions, please let me know. See you.